I've seen a lot of posts recently about people struggling with automatic installs of Office 2016 from Office 365. Um, so I thought I'd run through the process of how you automate that installation. So if you wanted to roll it out to a lot of machines, for example, um, it's done using the Office deployment tool, which is here. So you need to find that. It's the Office 2016 deployment tool, uh, and you need to download it. So what, I've already downloaded it, so let's have a look at it. And there it is. So what we're going to do is just run that. And it's going to ask for somewhere to extract it. So I'm just going to make a directory on my local machine. There we go. And I'm going to extract the files into there. OK, now we are going to want to um, have all the installers and everything in a shared directory because we're, we're going to want to push it out to a lot of machines. So what I'm going to do is on my C drive of a distribu distribution point, I'm going to create a shared folder. There we go. I've just called it Office 2016 installer and I'm going to share it. Just for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to give everyone full control. Obviously, you put a bit more thought into the permissions there. There we go. So we've now got a, a shared directory called Office 2016 Installer. And we also have our Office Deployment Tool. There we go. Now, you see that there's a configuration file there. Now, it's that configuration file that we need to edit. So what I'm going to do is just right click on it, open with Notepad. OK, and here's our XML file. Now, this XML is pretty much ready to go for the current branch of 2016. Um, it also has um, a specification as to whether it's a 32 or 64 bit. OK, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a source path parameter here. OK. Now that's the um, shared path that we defined a few minutes ago. So if we have a quick look at that path, DC SQL, you'll see that I've got a share called Office 2016 Installer. That's the path to it. And that's what I want to put in this XML file there. OK, so we'll save that. So that will have saved back to our Office 2016 deployment tool. OK, so what I'm going to do is just run a command prompt now and pop into that directory. There we go, there's our stuff. Um, what I'm going to do is actually run the download command. And the way we do that, it's set up, download, and then the name of our configuration XML. There we go. Now what that's going to do is that's going to go off to Office 365 and actually download the source code for you for Office 2016. So if we have a look in our shared directory we created, which is in there, we should see that Office has, has been created and it's actually starting to download stuff. Now it can take a little while, so what, what we'll do is we'll let this finish and we'll come back to it when it's done. So that's done. It took a little while. So what we'll see now in our installer directory is we've got a copy of Office uh, and it's about, well, 1.1 gig. So it's a decent size. So what I'm going to do is to take you through how we actually run it on a, a machine. So the first thing I'm going to um, do is just copy that configuration and this setup from the deployment tool into our distribution share. Of course, you know, if you're being um, a bit more together and it's not so late, you could have actually just created one directory and, you know, not have to copy this stuff across. So what I'm going to do now is just jump across to a test machine to install it. So I've got another machine here, which is a Windows 7. So let's get logged into it. There we go. So let's have a look at that share. So it's on our on my server called DCSQL and it's under Office 2016 installer. And what we want is setup. Now, what we need to do though is actually add some um, parameters to that. So 
we need to know the path to it. So I'm going to just type it in, which is DCSQL Office 2016 installer setup. And I'm going to add the parameter of configure this time and then actually put in the path to the configuration XML as well. There we go. So you can see we've got the full path to the uh, setup command and the full path to the configuration XML. So I'm just going to copy that out and we'll paste it into the run box. There we go. So you can see now that it's actually kicking off and, and getting ready to install Office. So this is the click to run installer. Um, we can do this repeatedly on lots of machines. So let's let's wait for this finish, then we'll have a quick look at it. So here we are. You can see that's finished. It's saying you're all set. Office is installed, um, and it's even put it nicely down on my taskbar. So there you go. I can now fire up Office 2016. Now this is going to pop up with the activation because it's an Office 365 based one, but there are there are things you can do in that custom XML to deal with this activation and also deal with um, various other settings that that are in that uh, file. So on the blog, I've sent I've put in a link to an online uh, configuration XML editor, which is actually really good. Uh, so it's really worth having a look at that. So the other question I get asked about is, well, how can I automate this? How can I send it through to a lot of machines? all at once well we can do that with group policy so let me roll this machine back to uninstalled and then i'll show you what it looks like from a group policy perspective so let me show you how you can do this via group policy as well it's pretty easy so i'm going to fire up the group policy uh, management tool which is here now my machine that the test machine is under the installer ou there so what i'm going to do is create a gpo and link it there and i'm just going to call it the office 2016 installer there we go, and I'm going to edit it. All right, so the bit that I'm interested in is the computer configuration, window settings, and scripts. And what I'm going to do is add a startup script. Now, I need to browse to it because we're going to be running it from a separate uh, UNC. So it's under DCSQL, Office 2016 installer, and it's the setup file there. Now the important bit is we have to have these parameters. So what we're going to do is add the configure and we're going to add the path to that configuration XML. So it's going to be DCSQL Office 2016 installer and then we're going to call it configuration.xml. There we go. So we'll set that up save it to the policy and that policy will now apply to that machine when it boots up now bear in mind this with this particular setup it basically means it's going to run the script every time you reboot that machine so you do need to think about how you're going to do it personally i tend to put um, a bit of code wrapper around these installers so it will do things like double check to see whether this has been run already on the machine so it will check to see whether office is on there um, it'll also make sure for example it installs the right bitness of office all that kind of stuff but it's probably a bit beyond the scope of this this particular blog but um, this is basically how you do it now what I'm going to do is just jump across to my other machine we'll fire it up we'll let the um, group policy run then we'll come back to it in a few minutes when it's finished so I've given it a little while to run um, it's probably been going for maybe 15 20 minutes I I'm not sure how long the actual installer takes I haven't actually looked at that but let's log on to this machine There we go. Now what we should see is that we've now got Office 2016 on there. There you go. So there's Word 2016. We've got Excel. There you go. It's still asking to activate because I didn't really change that XML from the last time. But what you can see, it, it, you can actually deploy this through group policy and it does work and, it, and it's quite effective. What I would suggest though is have a little, little look at some of the scripts that are out there that kind of do some of the customization for you. Um, you know, stop the uh, multiple running of it, that sort of stuff. But you can see that it's actually pretty straightforward, really. So I hope you found that useful.